Let's talk about something that's really quite important to raster analysis and GIS in general. And that is the difference between AND, OR, and a XOR. Now, as you can see here, the Boolean AND does the following. If, if both the input values are true, the output value is 1. In other words, true. If one or both inputs are false, then the output is 0. So that is the AND. Let's go ahead and go back and look at the OR operation. Now, this is where, in GIS, it's different from English or standard language, right? Because in standard language, if I've got OR, it's usually, I take this or this. It's, it's usually exclusive. But in GIS, as you can see, if one or both input values are true or non-zero, then the output value is one. So in common speech, or seems to be this or this, right? The old song, it's got to be this or that. But in GIS, the or is if this is true or this is true or both of them, then the output is true, as you can see here in this diagram. If, if both input values are false, then the output is false. And let's take a look at one last one, and that is the XOR operation. So this is a Boolean exclusive OR. So here, if one input value is true and the other is false, the output is 1. If both input values are true or if both are false, the output is 0. So this is an exclusive OR. Let's take a look at how that looks in practice, OK? So let's take a look at the raster calculator. What I've run here is let's take a look at geoprocessing results. This is a nice thing to be able to go back to your previous um, analysis that you did and look and see what you did. So in this case, I want to show you what I did on the raster calculator. And inside there, I'm going to look at the inputs. OK, here's my map algebra expression. How did I do that? There's my grid and my messages. Here's the raster calculator that I ran just a moment earlier. OK, so this is what I ran. I did a where the slope was less than or equal to 5 and the elevation from my DEM is greater than or equal to 380. And as you can see here, my results are this, what's in green. Those are the true. I turn the false to be invisible or hollow. So that is my AND operation. Let's run this same thing again now, but this time let's run it with the OR operation. And the way to do that easily is I can go back up here and go to Geoprocessing Results, and I can go to the Raster Calculator again. And this time I'm just going to copy and paste, and this time you use a different operator in there. So here, I'm going to say, instead of the AND, I'm going to use a straight bar, which is a OR. OK? So now, so now I've got the slope is less than or equal to 5, or the elevation is greater than or equal to 380. And here I'm going to put OR for a just a little language in there to, so that I know that my output grid is, has been done with the OR operation. Notice that I've got parens around these. And my output raster, it's giving me that little warning there because if you hover over the warning, it says the base name is more than 13 characters. So, so I need to make it a little, little shorter than that. And let's call it slope 5 or L380. That should work. OK, so it's going to run that. This time, I'm going to change my, my zeros to hollow. And I'm going to change my base layer here. So I'm looking at the hill shade. And let's go ahead and turn that other one off. All right. So now you can see that this is radically different from the AND. This is what I had with the AND. OK, I had this greenish color. And now I've got, with this, I've got this blue. So in other words, it's almost directly opposite to what I had before. Let's take a look here. I've got the AND showing now. Slopes are flattish and the, and the elevation is high. 
OK. But when I ran it with the OR operation, notice I've got everything that's true is in blue. So flat areas or areas that are high in elevation. In other words, get beyond the common language. The common language, again, is, is this or this. But in terms of GIS, what you've got is all of the areas that are, that are flat, high or low, and all of the areas that are higher than 380 in elevation. So you've got flat areas as well as high areas. So again, the, you know, your common language is, is getting in the way here, but you can see that the OR is radically different from the AND. Now finally, let's do the XOR, the exclusive OR. So again, I'm going to go to my geoprocessing results. So I can go ahead and call that raster calculator up again. And this time we're going to use the, the hat, the, the um, triangle. That's the XOR, exclusive OR operator. So here, I'm going to change it to this symbol. And I'm going to call it XOR elevation 380. XOR. All right, good. Let's run that. So this is a, it's going to be different again from what we had before. Let's get rid of the results. Turn the false to hollow. And so in this case, let's go ahead and turn the true to some other color. All right, super. In this case, now I've got an exclusive OR. It's either flat or it's high in elevation. Those are the true values. In other words, you can see that the flattish areas and the higher areas are in red, exclusive OR. Okay? Here, it's a regular OR operation, and here, it is an AND operation. So very important to understand your operators and realize that they're going to give you radically different results. And also, realize that the, the way that GIS works is sometimes at odds with our, with our common everyday speech. So make sure you pay attention to the help files here and know what you're getting and know what you're doing at each step of the operation. Thanks.